Hello, in this video we will be discussing how you can connect to your 3D Potter printer and other options as well as how to tell the printer to connect to your local Wi-Fi network. The advantages of that is uh, you won't have to connect to the printer's Wi-Fi network and you can just continuously stay on your own network and have the printer on it as well so you don't have to switch back and forth. So when you first receive your printer from us, it is in S2 mode. In S2 mode means it generates its own Wi-Fi. So here we have the cover off, so I can show you uh, the Wi-Fi mode indicator light. So when you first turn the printer on, the blue light over there on the right side indicates the Wi-Fi mode. So as you can see there, it instantly went to solid on. So when I'll turn this off again, as you can see, the light's off. When we turn it on, it immediately goes solid on. That indicates that the printer is in S2 mode and is broadcasting its own Wi-Fi signal. So we can go ahead here and look at our printer interface and look for the Wi-Fi network that the printer is generating. So here it is, 3DP-10. This is our uh, Model 10 printer. This is a 10 Super. So after you connect to the network and its password is 1234567 so one two three four five six seven eight you can then open the printer interface and type in the printer's address which is 192.168.42.14 and you have full control over the printer and this is the default way we send our printers out into the field now if you want the printer to connect to your own network you're going to have to program its Wi-Fi chip uh, with your local network settings. So for that, you need to know three things. You need to know your Wi-Fi network name. In this case, the Wi-Fi network name we're gonna be connecting to is called 3D-Potter. So that's our local name here. You need to know that, that's one. You need to know the password for your Wi-Fi network and you need to know your default gateway address. So that is your router's default gateway address. Ours is 10.1.10.1. .1 uh, other networks like Cisco routers use uh, 192.168.0.1 or .1.0 or .1.1. You know, you need to know what your default gateway address is. So on Windows computers, it's quite easy to find out what your default gateway address is. You connect to your Wi-Fi network, not the printers, but your own Wi-Fi network, the one you want the printer to be connecting to. And you can open command prompt, which is CMD. So you open Windows and search CMD and type IP config space all. And I'm gonna cover some of it because some of it needs to be, or IP config one word, sorry. IP config. Okay, excellent. And so I have now scrolled by, perfect there. So on here on the screen, I see default gateway, and over on the right, it tells me what it is. So it's 10.1.10.1. That is our default gateway address. So we're going to reconnect to the printer now. And we are gonna type in a command that programs it to connect to a Wi-Fi network. So uh, these commands we have available online uh, on our FAQ. Otherwise, you can just uh, write it down manually along with me. And our programming command is gonna be M587. So I'm just gonna copy it here and then I'll go over it in a moment. So let's uh, make sure we're connected here. Yep, Z is moving up, so I just push home Z. We're connected to the printer, it's moving. And we are gonna go to console. And in console, we're gonna type uh, the information required, those three things. The network name, the password, and a variation of the default gateway address. So under console, it is M587, uh, then your network name, and the network password, and then a default gateway address. So I'll get a close up here, hopefully it's Readable through the camera lens, there we go. So M587, you can pause the video if you need to. Uh, S, open quote, your Wi-Fi name exactly as it is. Another quote, space, P for password, 
open quote, and here we go. We're leaking our <laughs> Wi-Fi password. If you're ever in Stewart, Florida, you can steal Wi-Fi from us, I guess. And that is 3DP with capital letters, 76444. And in that, instead, you would enter your password, with the space, and then the letter I, and then with no quotes, your address you want the printer at. So since the default gateway address is 10.1.10.1, you need to give it another number uh, of the number two all the way up through uh, 256. So preferably something in between. We chose 200 as a nice round number. And so you know you don't have to choose dot 200 for your last number. If your default gateway address is 192.168.0.1, well then an example would be 192.168.0.100 or dot 50 or dot 200. Something that's easy to remember. Okay, so now that we have that command, you know, so in this case, let's actually make it something else than what it's currently programmed for, so I can prove that this method works. Let's say it's 150. You should then see a green line of the same command that you just sent, and the bar should be green, meaning it accepted the command. And so now, when we get off of S2 mode, so S2 mode is what the printer's in right now, and we need to switch it to S1 mode. S1 mode is to tell the printer to look for a Wi-Fi network rather than generate a Wi-Fi network. So here under the system settings and under file directory, uh, system directory, we're going to open the config file. We highly recommend not changing anything in this config. Should really only need to change two things in a config, the Wi-Fi setting we're about to change, or Z height if you want a shorter Z height for faster prints. So here under network settings, which is, uh, I'll get a close up of it and I'll highlight it. Is M552S2. M552 is the network command. And so we are gonna change it out of S2. To S1 and save. And if it asks to reset the board, you can hit yes. In addition to the resetting the actual board, I reset it as well by power after a couple seconds as well, after you've saved the file fully. So now, when the printer turns on, this Wi-Fi light is gonna operate differently. It's actually gonna blink a few times as we're looking for the network to connect to. So you can see how it's blinking, now it's on permanently. If the light is continuously blinking and not stopping, that means it can't find your programmed Wi-Fi network. That means you've entered that M587 command incorrectly. Either you have mistyped your local network address, your password, or sorry, you mistyped the SSID name, your network name, the password, or the network address you gave it, which has to be a variation of the default gateway. One of those parameters is incorrect, or the quote placement was incorrect, so this light would just be blinking still if that's not working. So we'll actually do that in a moment to show that near the end of the video, but if everything has gone correctly, we are now gonna type in that address. We're gonna make sure we're connected to our network now, and we're gonna type that address in. I believe that was 150, so 10 dot, oops, 10.1.10.150. And it looks like we're connecting. The interface does take just a few moments to load. But once it's open, it's fully usable and ready to go. Excellent. So here we are. The printer's in S1 mode, connecting to a network, and we've reprogrammed the Wi-Fi. Now, let's actually go ahead and enter a bad command so I can show you what th this requires in this procedure. So here we are. Uh, we have our network name and uh, network name, our network password, and our default gateway address with a variation to assign an address to the printer. So let's go ahead and, and give it something bad. Let's, uh, uh, we'll say, well, let's mistype the password. So 10.1.10.200. So let's switch it back to 200 to what it's at. But I mistyped the password. So that is not our Wi-Fi password. But the printer doesn't know that. So when we send this command, we get an OK response saying, uh, yep, I will look for that name and for that password. So now the printer's in S1 mode. 
and it's going to look for that information. So now when we restart it, this blue light is just going to be blinking forever and eventually it'll time out after a minute or two. And we can't access the printer at all. Uh, we can't because the printer can't connect to a network and we can't open the interface anymore. So we're kind of at a stalemate now of what we need to do. And I'll show you how we get past this step right now. So let's go ahead and turn the printer off. As you can see, we can't connect. Interface is connecting, can't connect. There's no Wi-Fi network being generated because it's trying to connect to a network. So let's turn the printer off and take this SD card out. So if you can't, you need to push the SD card in. So you give it a little push in and then you pull it out. And if you can't pull it out all the way directly, you can use a pair of small needle nose pliers and very, very gently give it a little tiny, tiny pull, very gently holding the SD card. So we'll then go to our computer and with a micro SD card reader, go ahead and plug it in. Okay, and then we will read the card contents with a file explorer. And there should be four folders on our cards. G codes, macros, sys, SYS, and www. We want to open the SYS folder. And here are the same files that we had on the interface previously. So we want to enter the config file, the one with the least extension, so the shorter config file name. And here's all those settings from before. And we can scroll down a bit. You can open this in WordPad or text editor or some programming things to see. And as you can see here, here's the same network setting. Network M552S1. Since our programming is uh, the Wi-Fi command we entered is incorrect, we're gonna go ahead and change that back to S2 and save the file. If a window comes up and asks about file formatting, we need to make sure that the file formatting stays as the same file formatting. You do not want to save this as a text document. It needs to remain, remain as a .g file. So we can go ahead and X out of this and close this. And now that we're back on S2 mode, we can go ahead and put the SD card back into the printer. So. As you can see here, all I did was take the SD card and plug it back in here. And now when we turn the printer on, this Wi-Fi light should turn on almost immediately. It might have one tiny blink right there, but as you see, the light is now solid on. It is broadcasting its own Wi-Fi signal again. And we can reconnect to the printer's Wi-Fi once again. And remember our printer's Wi-Fi network is not what was we just program the printer has its own custom address of 192.168.42.14 and that will always remain at that and you could change that as well but that is just what the printer comes with and we're connected once again but our old wi-fi setting the one with the incorrect password we put in is still wrong so we need to go ahead and change that back again And here's a good code. So this is the correct password and name for our network, as well as a valid address. So now when we send this, send, good, it accepts it. And we want to go back into the config file again, and we can try again. So the network is in S2 mode. That means it makes its own Wi-Fi. As you can see here, broadcast Wi-Fi on S2 or S1 to connect to network. Let's try and connect to our network again. So we're going to go to S1. We're gonna hit save on that and reset the board. And now when we reset the board, I'll just freehand the camera here. I hit yes right now. The Wi-Fi restarts. It should blink once or twice and then remain sold on. Looking for network, looking for network, connected. Excellent. So we are now connected to our network. And remember, we have to switch our Wi-Fi networks again. Make sure you're connected to that network. There we go, it automatically connected to our 3D Potter network there. And so we want to type in that address that we just changed. So we changed it again to 200. So I believe that is 10.1.10.1.200. There we go. Just have to take a moment there to find the, the printer. All 
it takes just a moment to load and there you go we're back in the printer again and we have full control over the interface again and that's how you can get the printer connected to your own network